Well, hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Always Analog, where we celebrate the beauty of analog technology in the digital world. And uh, we've been looking a lot at writing utensils, uh, pens and pencils, but uh, today, what do we have here? We have a black case that holds inside of it a Smith Corona Clipper portable typewriter. So we're going to take a look at this today uh, in its original case and this wonderful machine. Uh, this is a Clipper model, uh, Smith Corona, serial number 5C116375, which puts the date of manufacture is in 1949. Uh, so this beautiful machine is now 71 years old and still going strong, I might add. So uh, this is the Clipper model. Let's uh, take it out of its case here. Uh, over here on the, where my finger, where my left finger is, you'll see a little latch. If you depress that lever on the latch, it will release the typewriter and it simply slides directly out of its case and we'll put the case aside and take another closer look at our typewriter. So you're getting sort of a bird's eye view now. We'll, we'll move things around to, to let you look. Let's, let's come in a little closer if we can. So uh, this is a, uh, again, a clipper is the model and the Smith Coronas uh, at, for this series, which this is a five series and they made these typewriters pretty much from 1949, this would have been the first year, uh, right up until around 1960. And, you know, th there were some cosmetic changes over the years. Of course, they came in different colors, blue and green and pink, uh, gray. Uh, this is sort of this non-glare, uh, light tan or dark tan, um, um, they might, I don't know what the, what, what color they called it, but this was sort of standard issue. The Clipper was a basic typewriter. Uh, it would have been what we would consider a bottom of the line or um, the most inexpensive typewriter that would have been available at the time. Other popular models uh, of Smith Corona portables in the five series include uh, the Silent, the Silent Super, um, the Sterling. Uh, I think I have one of each of those and over time we'll get to them all and we'll be able to look at the features. But what a beautiful uh, machine this is just in and of itself. It is, um, it has these green keys and of course, now by 1949, they were getting around from the round uh, keys and going more to what they call the finger form style keys, which had a, a slight indentation and were designed to sort of fit the finger a little bit better um, uh, for the touch. But they have the beautiful hunter green color keys with uh, the shift key, the backspace key, and the margin release key in sort of a lighter green. Uh, this typewriter, although, like I said, it wasn't the top of the line like the Super Silent or the Silent Super, um, it did have still a lot of really great features, which included a three color uh, ribbon option, so black, 
stencil in red. I happen to have a two color ribbon in here at the moment. Um, it uh, features a bell for the margins. Now you'll notice one thing it doesn't have is there's no paper bale here. And uh, that was not available on the Clipper model. That's something that came with the higher end model when you got into the uh, Silent, Silent Super, and Sterling. But the Clipper did not have the, um, the paper bale. Instead, what it had is sort of these, these paper, these fingers. You see these little arms that kind of come up and they uh, have a metal roller at the top and they, let's, let's get in here a little bit so you guys can see these. Uh, so this will sort of press, keep, this will hold, this will do what a paper bale does essentially. Uh, it was a less expensive mechanism to put on uh, and it just had these two steel rollers, but it essentially worked to keep the paper pressed up against the platen here. Uh, one thing that this typewriter has that all Smith Coronas had, but you'll see here, it says floating shift. And that was something that Smith Corona touted for many, many years, long after it came out and other manufacturers had their own version. And basically what that was was the advent of the carriage shift rather than, uh, I'm sorry, the basket shift rather than the carriage shift. So before the floating shift, uh, it, when, you, when you hit the, um, the shift lever, the entire carriage would raise. Uh, and of course, the entire carriage weighs more and you're lifting it up so it requires more effort than the than the uh, the leverage to push the basket down, which essentially does the same thing and allows you to type your caps and your uppercase characters here. So the floating shift that was a trademark of of Smith Corona. Really a nice machine. There's the, uh, the side of the carriage here. You'll see it features um, a release uh, button here to sort of, in case you were filling out a form or you needed to turn the carriage, you would pull this out like so. Be able to position the platen in any, any spot you needed and then put it back in. Um, so you have also have here on this model is you have a one, two, or three line space option, uh, which is very nice. Uh, you have uh, your carriage release levers on either side. Here's one and here's one. And I always liked where Smith Corona put them. When you get into the 60s and 70s, they put these plastic levers, uh, used the same mechanism, but instead of these metal levers, they used plastic and they were a little larger and I guess maybe easier to, uh, to get your fingers on. But you know what happens to these plastic lovers, especially over the years, and maybe they weren't thinking that these typewriters would still be going 50, 60, 70, 80 years after they made them. But those plastic ones, which wouldn't be as old as this, but the plastic gets so brittle over time that they break. They break at the base. Um, and, and then it's a problem. Uh, and so I have many that have broken uh, from use. Uh, so I love the, the 5 Series because they have the metal levers. You have your margin here settings, uh, which is simply a depressing and sliding to select your margin settings there. Uh, you also, of course, inside uh, 
we have our our gauge here. This is a pica, as you might have been able to tell from uh, the measurements here of the carriage, which is 80 uh, characters. And um, we can also, let's see, how about let's take a look inside. Let me bring this out a little bit. And we'll look inside the machine. Uh, of course, I've cleaned it when I got it. I've had this machine a long time and I've used it quite a bit. I really love typing on it. Uh, but um, it, uh, it really, the mechanism that they used uh, on these are, is really, really well done. And they're really great to type on. As a matter of fact, I'm not alone in my admiration of the 5 Series. I think uh, if you look around and you ask around to people who really know typewriters, um, in terms of American-made portable typewriters, the 5 Series Smith Coronas are considered among the best by a lot of people and uh, of American typewriters, particularly of this era. You'll find here, there is a lever right here. And it basically set L2, 3, 4, 5, 6, H. And that's light to hard. And this is your touch control. So this is where you set it um, for your own personal touch. It sets a certain level of tension. I think it's almost negligible, honestly, on this machine anyways. But um, you can feel a slight difference. I can. But here's your touch control is located here under the hood. And the ribbons, very easy to replace. Uh, uh, they're still very easy to get. And um, uh, it's, a, it's an easy machine uh, to maintain and care for. And that's also on the inside, on the underside here, you'll see that we do have a little insulation. And that's really all that's there for, to provide a little bit of sound insulation. Again, it had a number of features for, you know, sort of the lesser model uh, in the lineup for 1949. It still came with a lot of nice nice features. Uh, there's also, you can't see it, but there's, um, there's a thick felt pad under the basket. So when the keys come down, they, they fall on that and they're relatively quiet. Now the Silent and su Silent Super has more insulation because that was their selling point that they were a quieter typewriter. But I gotta tell you, I've <laughs> I have a lot of typewriters, and some of them are supposed to be silent. I don't know that there's really any such thing, but that's okay. We love the sound of the machine. Let's take a closer look here at our Smith Corona Clipper typewriter from 1949. So we're coming in. You can see a little closer the, the basket with the floating shift logo there. Yeah, uh, in the center, and the uh, typewriter actually is in really nice shape. I had to do a little cleaning up when I found it. It was dusty and dirty, as they often are, but overall it was good. There you see the color ribbon color selector on the, on the right. Uh, there's another lever there on the left. That's a spool uh, directional ribbon reverse lever. Here looking at the side you see the left platen knob, uh, the platen release button, um, the carriage release lever. L.C. Smith and Corona Typewriters Incorporated made in USA. Uh, thinking maybe it was made in Syracuse, New York. That's where their headquarters was, and they had a factory there. Here's the right side carriage release lever and platen knob there. There's a little, a little chrome uh, latch there, which helps you center the carriage before you put it in the case, so that when you bring the lid down, 
it closes completely and doesn't hit the uh, typewriter. And yeah, I love those green keys. Little look at the inside. There's the tension setting lever there from light to hard and a few different degrees in between depending on how you like the touch control set. And there's our floating shift again. And yeah, overall a very, very nice machine. You notice there's no tab button here. That was not an option for the Clipper model. That was reserved for the higher end model. So there's no tab uh, tabulation <clears throat> automatic here. You, you got to do it old school, but still a very nice machine. All right, let's type with our 1949 Smith Corona Clipper here. Uh, see how we do. Um, This is a 1949. Let's see. This is a 1949 Smith Corona Clipper. Smith Corona was based in Syracuse, New York. Uh, by the way, just some history. Uh, the Smith Typewriter was founded in 1886. The uh, Smith Corona Typewriter Company was formed with the merging of the Smith Typewriter Company, L.C. Smith Typewriters, and it merged with Cor the Corona Typewriter Company. And uh, that was in 1926. And so, and they were in Syracuse, New York, it's where they did most of their manufacturing. Okay. Let's see, uh, maybe some quotes. Love, like virtue, is its own reward. Um, rudeness is the weak man's imitation of strength. Mm, let's see, what else? Uh, he is most powerful who has power over Himself. So you can see we have a nice pica bold font and types very nicely. Uh, maybe something, I'm going to change it to red. Men to come to the aid of their country. Uh, fill my clicker boxes with a dozen. Yeah, really nice 
to type on this great old typewriter. Uh, so this was a closer look at a 71 year old really engineering marvel still performing its assigned task beautifully uh, to this day and that is uh, to type so uh, really nice machine uh, fairly common by the way you can find these very easily uh, here and there uh, you'll see them. They sold them by the millions uh, over the years. They were a very popular machine. Uh, they advertised these. Uh, Smith Corona and Remington did a lot of advertising on their portables and they sold them uh, in the 50s. Uh, remember, this was 1949 to 1960, post-war pretty prosperous, uh, prosperous time in the United States. People were buying things and, uh, you know, everybody needed a typewriter. Uh, whether you were a student or you were a business person, uh, you, you typed personal correspondence. It was just something that almost most households uh, particularly middle-class households, had a typewriter. And maybe it was just a portable like this in a case, but uh, they were very common. And so they're out there. If this is a typewriter that intrigues you, uh, I would highly recommend uh, Smith Corona 5 Series from this era, any of them. And like I said, as we go on, we'll take a look at some of the other typewriters from this series, like the Silent and Sterling and Silent Super. But this has been the Clipper, and thank you so much for being a part of this episode of Always Analog. We'll see you back again real soon. Thanks.